My theme uh, is a continuation from last time, how to discover, build up, and use our spiritual gifts. And uh, so we have started to talk about that, how to find out our spiritual gifts, and how to build it up, and then use our spiritual gifts. And uh, a few days ago, something uh, very uh, miraculous happened to me and to a, a pastor. Uh, what happened was I was in a dream. In a dream, I, um, I saw that one of the pastors has a, you know, um, maybe a temptation of sexual sins. And I was not sure about that. So the next day, I sent him a message. I said, I saw this dream and asked him about it. He said, no, I am not in any kind of temptation. Uh, and then, and then uh, he said, um, uh, but the next day, he said to me, he sent a message. A woman called me and asked me to go to a hotel. And I asked her, what is this about? And she said, it's love between you and me. And this pastor refused to go. And then he asked me for my advice, how to handle it. And I told him how to handle it. And, uh, and then uh, what I discovered was, what I discovered was um, that, you know, this is my first real spiritual dream. Because now, for me, my dreams, I seldom dream of the people I know. Most of my dreams are, you know, things that are not realistic. Uh, different experiences, experiences of me that are not realistic. That's not related to real life. And then uh, what happened was, what happened was, you know, this was one time. <clears throat> now, there's a few times that I did see the people in the dream and this time I saw this person in a dream very clearly very clearly that uh, who he was and then I saw that he had some kind of a sexual temptation so I asked him and then he said that the next day on that day he said he had no such temptation but the next day he said that such a woman called him and asked him to go to the hotel and said that it's about love between you and me and so this um this is like a, a spiritual dream that god gave to me to uh to warn this pastor and this pastor said that he has learned my teaching and then he was very careful not to fall into any kind of sins like that and but still a woman calling him like that it could be it could be tempting so uh, he, you know, that my reminder of him that, uh, you know, that I saw such a dream was a good reminder to him that he now, you know, he saw that this is a reminder from God. And it's also a, uh, the first time I really, I can say that this is really a spiritual dream. It's a really a spiritual dream that I, I can say that, you know, the name is real and then the person is real and, uh, and then that he did, he did, uh, had a temptation, a sexual temptation the next day. So this is uh, God giving me this spiritual gift and I want to, you know, build on it and to uh, use it more when it comes. Okay, I'm already online. Okay, now, from the last time, so just now what I shared that, you know, I saw this pastor had a sexual temptation. And then, um, and then it ended up that the day after that, the man really, the pastor really got a phone call from a woman uh, to ask him to go to a hotel and say it is a love between him and her. And so this is like God giving me a spiritual dream to remind this pastor and said the pastor said my reminder of him uh, give him the instant motivation to say no to that woman okay so this is one case of how we can use our spiritual gifts now uh, 
but of course not everyone experiences spiritual gifts the same way. Okay, now, so I'm going to go through very quickly what we went through last time. So first point is God gladly gives us spiritual gifts that Jesus promised to give us spiritual gifts in Mark 16. And Jesus has victory and gladly gives us spiritual gifts. This we talked about last time. We're not going to talk about this uh, at this time. And then God gives us supernatural spiritual gifts in 1 Corinthians 12, lists a number of sp supernatural spiritual gifts. These gifts are more supernatural than others because they are spiritual gifts like uh, you know, administration, or playing the piano, uh, leading worship. Now, although people can lead worship and lead people into the, a strong presence of God, into an infilling of the Holy Spirit, and into a, um, uh, some people even lead people to go to heaven. That's very uh, special spiritual gift. So it's, it's real that we can have spiritual gifts that are uh, very helpful to us and is very real that His spiritual gifts are very real. Okay, but then, you know, even though we, you know, not everyone receives supernatural sp uh, spiritual gifts, but that's something after we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we'll experience more and more as time goes on. So God gives us both more natural spiritual gifts. Now, even the natural spir spiritual gifts are supernatural. And then the more supernatural uh, spiritual gifts, like healing, uh, driving out demons, uh, prophecy, discerning the spirits, uh, different kinds of tongues and interpretation of tongues. So these are more supernatural spiritual gifts. And being filled with the Holy Spirit would, would help. And being filled with the Holy Spirit is not just not just experiencing experiencing the Holy Spirit. You know, some people went to a meeting and they experienced the power of the Holy Spirit and think they think they are uh, filled with the Holy Spirit. They are not necessarily filled with the Holy Spirit. Being filled with the Holy Spirit means a continual infilling of the Holy Spirit, that they are filled constantly, that they can experience Him constantly. And uh, also when they pray for people, people can experience the presence of God. That's how I define it, that it's a strong presence of God that is uh, transferable to other people when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, that it will help us to experience God's peace and His love and His joy, <coughs> His <coughs> power and motivation. <coughs> Anytime we pray, and also when we pray for people, <coughs> they can experience the Holy Spirit. So that's uh, what I uh, mean by being filled uh, with the Holy Spirit, that we have a very intimate relationship with God. And then turning away from all sins. Uh, now, there are some people who are filled with the Holy Spirit and they, you know, uh, they sin. And what happened is, they will also be affected by evil spirit, and this is very dangerous. So it's very important that we don't fall into sin, and it's very important that we, we don't use our spiritual gifts for money. Even though God will provide for our needs, we don't use our spiritual gifts for money. There are some people who charge for, for healing, for praying for people for healing, uh, for, uh, for deliverance. They will charge money. Um, now, now, ministers sh should receive salary. That, you know, if the church, if the church has set a rule and say that, okay, when you want to come for, uh, come for um, a ministry, you can offer, give offering. It's, it's, um, that is fine. When they say it's, you can, uh, you know, you can uh, give offering, but. It's different to say, okay, when I pray for you, you must pay money and how much you have to pay. That is demanding a certain amount of money for praying for people. I disagree with that. And then follow God's will, especially the Great Commission, and dedicating our lives to God and doing things for God's glory and not our own glory, that we glorify God. 
And then God's will is that all Christians will be filled with the Holy Spirit and receive supernatural gifts. That in Acts 2, 17, that we shall uh, prophesy that now not everyone will prophesy to a certain, uh, same degree. Now some people will receive messages from God of what to do, what to do uh, perhaps for himself, how he should use his life. These are uh, messages from God. And, and then there are some people who can receive clear messages for other people too. So these are gifts we can use and that we'll receive. And each person has different spiritual gifts and we should work together with other Christians to build up the church. So uh, we, we all have different gifts and we should build up each other. We don't compete with each other. We don't, we don't despise other people with less spiritual gifts. And God gives gifts to each person according to His will and plan. So God is a plan. And now some people always want prof the gift of prophecy. Now, it's not necessarily true that the gift of prophecy is stronger than the others or more beneficial for others, but some people really hunger for that. You know, if God doesn't give us a strong gift of prophecy, now it's God's choice. And some people have a stronger gift in evangelism, in helping people spiritually, and administration, in building up the church, and different things. Then he should use his gifts more because these are his special gifts. He, not everyone will be prophets. So not everyone seek the same prophetic gifts. And then different, uh, each person is important in God's kingdom that it, we are different parts of the body. Now we have talked about this last time so I'm go just going through this quickly. And we should be happy if another Christian is honored. So if someone has strong spiritual gifts and is greatly used by God, we, we should thank God for that. Even though that is our church member and then we are a pastor, we should be thankful that maybe our members can have stronger spiritual gifts than we. Now I have prayed for people and then they saw angels, but I never saw angels myself. <clears throat> I prayed for one person and she went to heaven and I haven't gone to heaven myself. I don't envy her. I appreciate her and I, I thank God for her, but I don't envy her and I'm happy for her. That is something we need to learn that because God will give the best gifts to the people who love Him. When we love Him, He will give us the best spiritual gifts. So it's very important that we have the right attitude. That our attitude is to glorify God and to bless other Christians and appreciate other Christians. We don't want to compete. We want to build up each other. And also we want to build up other churches, not just our own church. That when we have spiritual gifts, we want to strengthen other churches and work with other churches if they are willing and bless other churches. Just like what I'm doing now, I'm doing it for free uh, to help people to be able to watch my training. I do it because I want to glorify God. I want to help Christians, help pastors and leaders to be used by God greatly. I want uh, the kingdom of God to grow. And, and I don't, uh, you know, I'm not asking for anything in return. You know, actually we give out help to groups because we want to bless you all. And then in our life, we have priorities, which is very important to build up a strong relationship with God first. That's the most important thing. And then bear fruit of the Holy Spirit, including holiness, that we live a holy life. And then have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, and love and bless people. So we treasure people. And then fulfill our different responsibilities in our family, in our church, in our community, in our place of work, and then serve God in our life and our ministry. So these are the priorities. First is the strong relationship with God. First, and the spiritual life first, and then to bless people before we seek and fulfill responsibilities, before we seek to serve God and also to seek the spiritual gifts. And then how to discover our, <clears throat> our spiritual gifts? We can start with things we naturally want to do. If we naturally have musical sense, then uh, probably God wants to use us in leading worship or playing music. 
and or caring for people, then we do it uh, if that is our calling or share what God has done in our life. Now, that is something everyone should do or to do evangelism uh, and to share God's messages uh, to preach. So th this is for different people. Not everyone preaches. Uh, some people have the stronger, gift, stronger gifts of preaching while others, they just don't have the gift of preaching. They don't have to uh, seek gifts they don't have. But we want to do things we naturally want to do. And steps to discover our spiritual gifts. Love God and have a close relationship with God and fulfill the Holy Spirit and obey God and follow and live a holy life and have compassion on people that we care about people and receive training on spiritual gifts and then practice helping people using these spiritual gifts and operate in the spiritual gifts and seek God's strategy in our lives. So we should build up our spiritual life first and be filled with the Holy Spirit and then have compassion on people and then to seek ways to help other people. And then, uh, and then we can have faith to build up uh, uh, and use our spiritual gifts. That I remember in the past, I have uh, grown in the use of many spiritual gifts. I have, uh, for instance, after I experienced the Holy Spirit, I saw how the pastors help other people to experience the Holy Spirit. Basically, what he did was he, he helped us to say, to believe that God is right here. Reach out your hands to Him. Reach out your heart to Him. Love Him. And believe that He's right here blessing you. He, he keeps saying things like that. And then when we did it, we, f we were filled with the Holy Spirit. And I, so I, I learned this. And then I, uh, one time someone invited me to go to a, a mission field uh, to visit a group. And then I went there. And then I, I tried to do what the pastor had done that I lead these people to love the Lord and reach out to God and believe God is right here. And they were, many of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. So this is something we can uh, practice doing and try doing after we, you know, we have, uh, when we receive this spiritual gift. And then we want to build it up. And then, for instance, I, uh, I was uh, actually, I started to, uh, to play the piano, not after I learned to play the piano. Actually, I first learned to play the harmonica when I was very young. And then I learned the musical notes. And then what happened was, uh, and what happened was that uh, one time I, I thought of, you know, I can, uh, someone told me I can buy a keyboard. And I thought I can play a single note music and then a single note chord. And then so I bought the keyboard and then I start to just play the notes as I play the harmonica. And then after that, you know, I, I played for a while. After that, I learned, I, I took lessons of playing the piano. And, and then I kept uh, improving. And one time I was filled with the Holy Spirit and I felt very energetic in playing the piano and very free. And then I said, how come I can play so, play so freely now? And I noticed how I was doing it, and then I tried to, uh, to be so free every time I played the piano. And that way, my uh, piano playing become better and better. So this is something we can work on. That uh, with the infilling of the Holy Spirit, whatever we do, we can improve. Like in preaching, I watch some of the people who, who preach well, and I learned from them how to use the body motion, how to change the voice. You know, you notice how I change my voice, my pace of my, my speech and my tone of voice, the loudness. And sometimes it's soft and sometimes it's louder. So I, 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 I work on that. And then I uh, also be more energetic. So I learn from people. And then, and then my preaching became more, you know, more energetic. And also I learned after I do a lot of counseling, I understand the needs of people. And then I meet the needs in the sermons. And I communicate with them in the sermon. So this helps me in my sermon delivery. That's how I build up the, the ability of uh, preaching. And also, uh, God also gave me different teachings. Like now, He gave me a lot of teachings about how to build up people's spiritual life. And I thank God for that. 
And so I, I uh, grow on that. I, I, you know, I, I build on how to help people spiritually, how to help people in the ministry. And I thank God that God continue to download ideas to me. And so I can help people how to serve God better. So I hope you all will, uh, will work on this, that uh, you will say, you know, this is my spiritual gift and how I can build on it. For instance, my uh, English. I'm not a native English speaker. I uh, went to America when I was 23. Now, I already spoke English at that time. But at that time, my English has a very heavy Hong Kong accent. accent. And, uh, and then I went to America, and then a teacher in the Bible College helped me with how to improve my pronunciation. And also, she recorded a tape for me, and she said, okay, I say a sentence, and then you say it after me. And then, you know, in the recording, she would say a sentence and pause, and then say another sentence and pause, and ask me to repeat after her. So I repeat after her day after day, and then my, my uh, English improved a lot. And my schoolmate said, wow, your English has improved a lot. And then I also watch a lot of uh, YouTube videos uh, on preaching or, or talking about different topics that are helpful to ministry. And I also will mimic what they say in order to improve the way of my expression. And so this is helpful to me, how to build up my ability to express myself in English and in different, uh, you know, now I can preach in three languages, in Cantonese, in Mandarin, both are Chinese and then in English. So these are ways that we build up the spiritual gifts. And then for the training of minister, now I find God's strategy for me to use online training that I'm happy to, be, uh, be, uh, to give you spiritual uh, training on ministry that I hope that will help you to prepare for the last days, that you will be strong preachers, that you can uh, bring revival to your country. Okay, now this time, uh, this is what we start at uh, this time. Uh, the, uh, the previous part was from the last time. So how to build up our spiritual gifts. Most important is to have love for people. It's very important that when we use our spiritual gifts, it's not for ourselves. It's not for, the, for glorifying ourselves. It's for helping other people and blessing other people. So it's very important that we have love for people. We want people to be blessed. 1 Corinthians 13, 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. So even if I can speak with tongues of men of, uh, and of angels, to even speak in tongues, then if I don't have love, it's nothing. Even if I have the gift of prophecy and understand all kinds of mysteries and all kinds of knowledge, and if I and have all faith that I can move the mountain, but I don't have love, then it's nothing. So it's very important to have love. When we pray for people, we want to care about the people. We want to show concern to them. We want to care about their needs, their spiritual condition, their, their, uh, their, uh, their feelings. We want to care about them and to show them God's love. When we pray for them, we don't want to hurt their feelings. We want them to feel the love of Jesus through us. And, uh, and then God is happy with us because God is happy with uh, when we have compassion. And also... God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. So how do we build up the spiritual gift? It's very important to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And to be filled with the Holy Spirit, we need to learn to learn to worship in spirit and in truth. So Jesus said, God is spirit. God is not like man. God is not flesh and blood. And those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. The spirit includes our soul and our spirit. And our soul will include the mind, the will, and the feelings. The mind 
So the mind is the thinking that how to worship with the mind that our whole mind agrees with the Bible. Everything that Bible says is right. Everything the Bible says is true. I agree with God. I agree with everything in the Bible. So when we pray, we say, yes, Lord, I want to dedicate my life to you. I want to love people. I want to care about people. This is what the Bible tells me to do. And I want to honor God. And then the will that we decide to follow God and obey God. So in the will, I say, yes, Lord, I want to dedicate my life to God. I want to give my life to God. You know, I'm already 69 years old. Uh, and, but I'm still energetic. God bless, blesses me when I love Him and He gives me health. And many pastors already want to retire at this age, but I don't want to retire. Actually, whole day long, if not for the time of praying and the time I sp uh, spend with my wife and also time of exercise, other than that, I spend my time writing, preparing material for ministry and helping people and praying for people. So I decide to follow God totally. I give my life to God. I'm willing to serve God until the moment I die. Even when I am about to die, when people come to me, I will pray for them. You know, that's what's in my heart. I would was, I was say, I want to pray for you, to bless you. And uh, I am very happy even though I'm now, <clears throat> I'm very old. And, uh, you know, at a time when I'm dying, I say, you know, I know I'm going to die soon and go to heaven. But I'm very happy I'm going to go to heaven. And I want to serve God even in the last moment. I will tell people how wonderful God is. And it's wonderful to live and to die in Jesus Christ. And I'm willing to dedicate my whole life to God. So I hope that you all will say, yes, I want to dedicate my whole life to God. And then feelings. Build up positive feelings toward God. That's very important. You know, we have feelings toward our spouse, our children, our home, our church, our friends. But many people say, I don't see God. So it's hard to have feelings toward Him. Even though we don't see God, but we experience Him all the time. We experience His peace and love and joy and His power and His motivation when we pray to Him. We can experience God. This is showing that God is real and God is blessing us. So we need to learn to really like God. You know, be pleased with God. Delight in God. The Bible says we will be delight in the Lord. Then the Lord will give us the desire of our hearts. And God will also raise, up, up, raise us up to a high level when we delight in God. So we want to delight in God and really like God. I like God. I, I, I'm very happy with God. I, I desire God. I have good feelings toward God because God has prepared so many delicious food that is good for us, that is tasty, delicious, and also is good for our health. He has prepared our body so wonderful. Thank God for that, that we can taste food. We can absorb the food. We can think. We can have feelings. Thank God we have feelings toward people, uh, toward God, and toward animals. We have feelings toward animals. And uh, we, I thank God. I like God because the Holy Spirit is moving in my heart to guide me to follow God and give me peace and love and joy. So I learned to like God, and that is the key to being filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, I have prayed for many people because many people saw my videos online. I have English and Chinese videos on YouTube and Facebook. And then some people call me or send messages to me and ask me to pray for them or to counsel them. And I counsel them and then they, and I, I, I help them to see God is so wonderful. God is loving us. And then I rejoice with them. I say, the Lord is loving us. Hallelujah. God is so good. Hallelujah. God is so good. So I sing with them. I pray with them. And I laugh with them. I say, hallelujah, ha, ha, ha. God is so good. When I said, you know, you love God from your spirit, then you have joy. Ha, 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 ha. When you love God from your heart, joy will flow out. And some of these people instantly experience joy. They say, wow, after you pray for me, I feel so peaceful. My burdens go away and I start to feel joy. 
and I like that. I like that God can work in our life to bring joy to us and to other people. So I have good feelings toward God. So the first level that all people understand is the mind agrees with the Bible, agrees with God, and the will is that I decide to follow God totally. And the feeling that I have positive feelings toward God. I like God. I delight in God. And then worship without spirit. This is more vague because we all understand what the mind, the will, and the feelings are. But the spirit is like our deepest being, a whole being that relate to God. So we, we worship from the depth of our being. We worship with our whole being. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. From the from our heart, from our soul. Lord, I thank you. I love you. I love you. If you learn to love God from your soul, from your spirit, it's easier for you to experience joy. There are many people I lead them to love God. I say, Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. From the bottom of the heart, cry out to God. Oh, Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Cry out from the heart. You'll find that joy can flow out now you can try to do it right now try to do it and see if you can experience any joy you cry out from god from the heart cry out to god from your heart hallelujah oh, hallelujah it's like from your heart flowing to god and think of god standing in front of you we don't have to think of his face we we just think of god is standing in front of me and i like god I like Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. That's in this way, when we worship in spirit and in truth, and in truth, following the truth, following the Bible, and also in a true spirit, in an a, uh, honest spirit, that we don't fake it. It's real. It's really from our spirit. Then it's easy for us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And three kinds of prayer to build up our relationship with God. So I hope we all learn these three kinds of prayers, which, is, which are very helpful. First, prayer of grace. Uh, God, is love, God is loving me. God is laying His hand upon me. So it's declaring His grace from Him to us, from God to us. So God is loving me. God is blessing me. God is happy with me when I come to Him. God is thinking of me. God never forgets me. So this is our prayer of grace is from God to us. God is doing these things to, to us. God is loving us. God is remembering us. God wants to bless us. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. And then prayer worship is from us to God. Lord, I love you. I worship you. I like you. I depend on you. I need you. So now I, we can put in uh, wordings that are more intimate, like I like you. Now most people don't pray like this. They don't say I like you. But you know, we, we can say it to, our, to the people. Why can't we say it to God? God, I like you. I love you. I want to be with you. I hold on to you. I need you. I need you. I need you. I want you. <laughs> so I hope we can pray like this. When you pray like this, it's easier to be filled with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> now, some people think that... <clears throat> To be filled with the Holy Spirit, they have to yell and cry out, fill, fill, fire, fire, fire. The thing that is from the loudness of the sound. From the Bible, we know that it's from our love for God, from our spirit to worship God, to appreciate God, and to know that He loves us. This is very important. Now, when I motivate people to love God, I always say God loves you first. It's first what God God, what God does for me motivates me to respond to Him. It's always, when I counsel people, I always tell them what God is doing for you. God is doing this for you. God is blessing you. God is loving you. So we start with the prayer of grace. God, you are loving me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're loving me. You're blessing me. You're thinking of me. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You have a wonderful plan in my life. And then we respond with prayer of worship. We worship you. We adore you. We like you. We want you. We need you. And then the third kind of prayer is the interactive prayer. That this is from the Bible. That when we come close to Him, He'll come close to us. When we love Him, He'll prepare things for us that 
the eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and the human heart, the mind cannot think of. So the interactive prayer is based on these promises in the Bible. Whenever I love you, Lord, you are happy with me and bless me. That is in the Bible. So we can believe this. When we are praying, we say, Lord, you are happy that I'm praying to you. You'll be responding to me. Now, even though God may not respond to us in the way we want, sometimes we want some money immediately. God may not give us the money immediately, but God will provide for us. He will provide for us in the due time. So we say, Lord, I trust in you. I love you. I follow you. I obey you. I glorify you. And I know that you love that. And I like you like that. And you will bless me. I know that you will bless me. You will provide for my needs. So we can have interactive prayer that we know that God listen to our prayer and will respond. And He's happy with us. And He will bless us. The first response is His peace and love and joy and patience. I mean, His kindness, His goodness, all these things He'll bring to us. And you are pleased with me and you will respond to my needs and raise me up to a higher level. Now, these three kinds of prayer are very important. It will help us to be joyful. Now, many people pray like this. They'll say, Lord, I, have, I need money. Please help me. Please help me. I, I, I'm in need of money. I don't have money. Please give me money. You know, some people pray like that and then they just look at the lack of money and then they are under pressure. Instead, we can pray like this. Lord, you are a gracious God. You are full of love. You want to bless me. You will provide for me. So we declare to God that you have promised to do these things. And when I seek first the kingdom of God and your righteousness and all these things will be given to me. So I have confidence that you do these things. Thank you, Lord. So anytime we pray, we know that God is happy with us. So even in the middle of the night when I wake up, I say, Lord, you're happy with me. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> and then I feel with joy. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So I, when I thank God, you know, also, you know, after I experienced the Holy Spirit, a few months after that, I started to experience the joy. And I want to really keep the joy of the Lord. And I, I uh, the day when uh, the evangelist Pray for me and experience this great joy. I kept praying. I kept praying to keep this joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I kept praying that night and the next day and the day after that, every day. I kept praying to keep this anointing of the joy of the Lord. And, and then I help people to relax and trust in God's love. Trust that God wants to bless you. And then more and more people are filled with joy when I pray for them. Uh, you know, uh, I can find a way to show you my videos, how I pray for some people and then they experience the joy of the Lord. I, I'll find a way to, uh, to how to project that onto the screen. Uh, maybe in the next, uh, next session, I will show you how I pray for people and they're filled with the joy of the Lord. So I... I learned this, I've learned this, that God is happy with us. God wants to bless us. And God responds to our prayer. Every time we pray for sure, He is happy with us. Even though, you know, He might not answer the prayer in the way we want, but He will answer the prayer in His way, and it will be the best for us. So God will for sure bless us, so we can have confidence. So every time we pray, we can be filled with joy. And even when we are not praying, we can be filled with joy. We say, God is blessing me now. For sure, God is happy with me when I have this heart on, on Him. When I think about Him, God is happy with me. So all day long, we can be sure that God is happy that we like Him, we pray to Him, we desire Him, we want to glorify Him. God is always happy with us. So this is interactive prayer. And also, uh, God also gave me this interactive action. Now, this is something God taught me. I never heard this from people. And I give the glory to God. It's not that I'm great. It's God who is great. God downloaded these teachings to me when I learned to relax in God and enjoy God. And God gave me all these teachings. And also interactive action. Whatever I do, the Bible says even when we give a cup of cold water to a little one, that we will not lose our reward. So when we do little things for God, God will not God will not forget, God will remember and will, will reward us. So I can always believe that whatever I do for God, God is very happy to reward us and to bless us. 
and God is happy with us. So that is interactive action, whatever I do for Him. Like now I'm teaching, I'm happy that God is happy with me now. And when you are listening, listening attentively, God is happy with you. When you are taking in this teaching, God is happy with you and God will fill you with the Holy Spirit and fill you with joy and peace and love and give you motivation. So I hope you all will say, Lord, it's so easy to relate to you. It's so easy to pray to you because for sure when we have a sincere heart to pray to you, you for sure you answer my prayer and you bless me. So when we have a sincere heart, that's very important. Uh, it's when we sincerely want to bless people, we want to sincerely come to God uh, with a humble heart, we want to follow God and love God, then God for sure will be happy with us. Hallelujah. So I hope you remember these three kinds of prayer. Always declaring God's grace. God is gracious. God loves me. And I worship Him. And then when I, whenever I worship Him, for sure He is happy with me and He wants to bless me. So all day long, in our prayer, you know, we want to build up the relationship with God and f build up the faith in God. The faith in God means I believe He will do things according to His will. He will respond to my prayer. He will bless me. He will bless all those who trust in Him. So this is confidence in God. It is faith in God that for sure God will bless us. That, that way we'll be living in faith and in joy and in peace all the time. And how to be filled with the Holy Spirit continually. First, repent and turn away from all sins because all sins are destructi destructive. We must believe that any kind of sin is, is destructive. If we are unhappy with someone, if we have anger towards someone and don't forgive them, all of these are destructive. If we have any lust, it's destructive. And then we love and follow the Bible. We love the Bible. The Word of God is full of promises full of the promises of God. I want to follow the Bible and explain the Bible. It's very important that we explain the Bible when we preach. Look at the Bible verse and explains the key words and the key phrases and the concepts in it and the, and the nature of God that shows in the Bi Bible verses uh, or hidden in the Bible verses. God's nature, His love, His patience, His kindness, goodness, His holiness, His work in our life, all this nature and the grace of God. And believe, have faith that God wants to fill us. He wants to fill us. And then for spend long hours loving God and praying. So it's not just asking, not long hours asking, but loving God and believing that God is loving us and relating to Him. God, I love you. I like you. I enjoy you. I worship you. I adore you. And then obey God in every area, in especially the Great Commission to preach the gospel and to help people to obey everything Jesus has commanded. And take care of problems in our life because problems will block the blessings of God. And laying on of hands by a spirit-filled person, by spirit-filled person, I'm sorry, by, by spirit-filled persons and spirit-filled meetings are helpful. So when there are... Uh, God-loving, spirit-filled pastors or people or Christians, they lay hand on us. It can help us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And also, uh, spirit-filled meetings when people love God together, worship God together, enjoy God together. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. You're so wonderful. You're so wonderful. And all this will help us to be filled with the Holy Spirit continually. And all day long, we keep loving God, thanking God. Hallelujah. So first, we need to turn away from the sins, repent and turn away from the sins and love and follow the Bible and base our teaching on the Bible and have faith. He wants to fill us. He wants to fill us. So when we pray, we don't have to say, Oh God, when will you fill us? We just relax in God and believe that He will fill us. He will come to us. And for, God, for sure, God will bless us. And obey God. So the infilling Holy Spirit is for obedience and for preaching the gospel. And take care of problems, uh, negative feelings, negative thinking, sins, negative subconscious mind, anything negative. Uh, uh, problematic relationship with people, any of this we need to take care of. And then the laying of, of hands uh, by a spirit-filled person will fill us, will help us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. 
So we can have prayer meetings of, uh, of people together that we enjoy God's presence, we love God and, and, and enjoy God. And then we'll be filled with the Holy Spirit more and more. You know, the infilling Holy Spirit can come in a very gentle way. You can pray, oh Jesus, you're so wonderful, hallelujah. <laughs> and then you can be filled with the Holy Spirit. And other people can be filled with the Holy Spirit. It doesn't have to be loud. It can be loud. It can be soft. One time I was just leading someone to pray and I was praying like, oh Jesus, you're so wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. And you're loving us. Thank you. Thank you. And the person experienced the Holy Spirit and then the evil spirit started to come out from her. And someone asked me, are you driving out demons from her? I said, I guess I am. Demons are coming out. She said, how come you're not saying in Jesus' name demons come out? I said, God's presence will drive out demons. Although I, I would say I, in Jesus' name I cast out the demons, but I don't have to say it all the time. You know, when I notice that she has demons coming out, then I would say, uh, in Jesus' name, the demons come out. But I don't have to say that all the time. Even when I'm driving out demons, sometimes I would just say, Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're so wonderful. And I lead the person to rejoice in the Lord. Ha, ha, ha. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And the evil spirit will also leave. Because in the strong presence of God, evil spirit cannot stay. And also to have a strong hunger for the spiritual gifts. Now, being filled with the Holy Spirit, it will help us to build on our spiritual gifts. And I, I thank God that God has given me different spiritual gifts and He will give it to you too. Give spiritual gifts to you too when you hunger for Him and hunger to serve Him more. And uh, I thank God you know, uh, that, it, that He has given me the different gifts that are important for ministry. He has given me the gift to, to relate to Him in a loving manner, to experience the Holy Spirit, to understand the Bible and interpret the Bible and to preach with zeal and, and uh, real application, uh, musical talents to play the music and to lead worship and also uh, good teachings from God, how to train people for ministry and uh, strategy in, in our ministry. And I thank God for all this and also a heart of compassion. I have strong compassion on people and also provision for me so that I can uh, provide for other groups to be able to, uh, you know, pre to be provided uh, to, uh, to watch this uh, training online. So I thank God for all this that I have received and you can receive too. And here, have a strong hung hunger for spiritual gifts. I want, I want, I hunger for God first and then hunger for spiritual gifts. <clears throat> Second King, King 2 9, and so it was when they had crossed over that Elijah said to Elisha, Ask, what may I do for you before I am taken away from you? Elisha said, Please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. So he said, You have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I am taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so. So Elisha hunger for a double portion of the Holy Spirit upon him. And Elijah said, it's not easy for, for you to get it. But if you see me when I'm taken from you, then it will be given to you. And, and so Elisha did receive this double portion of the Holy Spirit. So thank God for that. And then how to use our spiritual gifts. The infilling of the Holy Spirit gives us courage to speak the Word of God. It's most important, first of all, that we can glorify God and tell the Word of God, explain the Word of God and preach the Gospel. Acts 4.31, And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together were shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the Word of God with boldness. So the infilling of the Holy Spirit motivated them to and give them the power to speak the Word of God with boldness, that we are willing to preach the Gospel and tell people about Jesus, tell people about the promises of God, the, of the wonderful work of God. So, in feeling of Holy Spirit, first is for helping people spiritually, bringing the Gospel to them. And then next, to do whatever is available to us to serve.